Welcome back, Python friends. We now start our exploration of the wonderful world of object-oriented programming. You may be tempted to blow past this particular class, but consider not doing that. For in this class, we will set the foundation for all OOP classes that come after this one. If you're interested in moving on to frameworks like Django, you'll need to understand OOP well. So let's dig in. What is object-oriented programming? OOP has been in existence since the 70s, and it's a computer programming model designed around objects rather than actions or procedures, and how to define data rather than the logic and how we manipulate it, which is largely what we've seen so far in this class. The main focus of object-oriented programming is to view objects as collections of data and the methods that operate on the data. We start to change the way we relate to the code we write. We see things as the objects they represent, for instance, animals or shoes or models, or whatever we wish to create. We've already used objects in this training series, for instance, a list or a dictionary or Python objects. However, for code to qualify as object-oriented, it must involve a construct known as inheritance. So why even use object-oriented programming? The first reason is it better resembles the real world. Object-oriented programming enables us to represent the things in our code that is more like how we think about things in real life. Objects will get created from a blueprint of sorts that we call a class. This is the basic design of the object we wish to create. From the class, we can manufacture many objects. Think of them as offspring. This manufacturing is called instantiation. These objects have certain characteristics, like a person may have blue eyes or brown. We call these characteristics attributes. Objects may also engage in certain behaviors. We call these methods, which are just functions associated with classes, so they'll look familiar to you. As we start to create more objects, we think about how they operate and interact with each other. The second reason is for reuse and organization. Using OOP is completely optional in Python, but as your code becomes larger and more complex, OOP becomes a very valuable tool. You will see the benefit in arranging your code into logical groupings. It will then be easier to upkeep, understand, and reuse, and that in the end will be a great time savings. So we'll look at some basic OOP principles and we'll start with encapsulation. Encapsulation states that data inside an object should only be accessed through its methods, which acts as an interface to an object's data. A method is the data's interface to the rest of the world, in our case, the rest of our computer program. We make use of a method instead of calling the data and writing additional code to perform some behavior outside of the object where the data resides. Why is this a good idea? Functionality is defined in just one place. Functionality is defined where the data is kept. Our data is not modified by code in a different part of our program. In Python, encapsulation is not enforced. It is instead a best practice or a convention. We can also indicate that a property is intended to be private by giving it a name that starts with a single underscore. Our next OOP principle is composition. Composition enables us to start to form relationships between objects. It's a way of grouping objects together by making some objects attributes of other objects. The relationships can be one-to-one, -one, one to many or even many-to-many. -many. This is dependent upon the role that each object plays. If objects are grouped together in this way, we say that they are strongly linked. An example of composition could be as follows. Perhaps we have three objects, dog, walk, and eat. Object dog may go for walks and eat twice a day. Each of these objects may be coded as a separate Python class where it has its own behavior or methods and relationships. Our next OOP principle is inheritance. Inheritance enables us to reuse code easily. If an object has and does most of what we need, we can inherit these attributes and methods from the parent object. 
If a given object inherits from another, it is said to be a subtype of that object. Why would we inherit from an object? If an object has most of the functionality we need, then if we inherit from it, we don't need to start from scratch and code those very same things that already exist. It's a time saver. It makes our code easier to understand. And if changes to the functionality are needed, we change it in one place and not in each and every object that inherited from that parent object. Here's an example. We may have an instrument object and a guitar object that we code to inherit from the instrument object. Why? Because they both make a sound. They both have certain tone. They both have a shape. They're made of certain material, can be purchased and played, etc. And let's define some core Python object-oriented programming objects. Classes. A Python class is a device used to implement new objects. Classes are the main object-oriented programming object. Classes support inheritance and serve as instance factories. Instances inherit attributes from a class and represent the actual items our code creates, like a dog named Fido or a student named Sue or something like that. Methods are like functions, only when they are included in a class, they are called methods. Methods represent things that your new object, say a person, can do, say talk or walk or run or speak. We'll look at the constructor method now. The constructor method is also called the initialization method. It is the first method to appear in any class you create. This method is automatically called by any newly created or instantiated object right after it's created. So let's look at a bit of code to make this come to life. We created a class called person. And notice classes are always created by convention. The names of classes that is in uppercase. So person is uppercase. Now we have def init self name. And the init is the dunder with the double underscores leading and trailing. That's our constructor method. Notice the first argument of every method in a class must have a special first parameter called self. That's by convention. You can call it whatever you want, but other programmers might not like you so much. So by convention, call it self. It's a good idea. This is used for the method to refer to the object invoking it. Well, then I have a print statement and then I have self dot name equals name. Now, I have three instances, right? I'm set to create three instances of this person class. Tom equals person with the name equal to Tom. So my attribute is Tom. Same thing for Trixie, name Trixie and person Bubba. You see what gets printed out here at the bottom based on the print statement in our constructor method. I am a new person here. I'm alive. My name is and then the variable name, which will be specific to whoever's calling it or whatever gets created or instantiated from it. So first we have Tom, then Trixie, then Bubba in order of appearance of my, of my instances created. Name I wanna point out here, we're gonna talk about this on the next slide. Name is an attribute of our person class. An attribute is something a person has. So in this case, our person has a name. We could define other things that a person has, but in this case, we only have one attribute defined so far for our person class. An attribute is set on the previous slide an attribute is something that our class object has. In this case below, it has a name. Having the name parameter included in our constructor creates it automatically just after instantiation. Okay, Python family, thanks for watching till the end. If this has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring you and others this type of content. Helping is easy. First, subscribe to the Yogi Koner channel. Second, like this video and leave any comments you feel moved to leave. And third, Share this video on any and all social media channels with your friends and colleagues. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.